Rabbits are herbivores. Yes. Rabbits are monogastric. Okay. Rabbits are false ruminants. Mm -hmm. Well, rabbits cannot vomit. One way street. Whoa, wait a minute. Guys, we are still on the same journey, the last mile to formulate our balanced pelleted feed for our rabbit. The digestive system and even the digestive processes of rabbit is so sophisticated and therefore there is a need for us to take a step back, you know, and break down this table. Guys, don't just take this table as it is and go and apply it. We need to go back line by line, component by component and break this down into detail so that we can be properly informed in selection of the right components in formulating our rabbit pellets. Okay, and that is what this session is about today. We are still on the last mile journey to formulate an appropriate feed for our animals. <music>
Moving on. So we started by saying that um, rabbits are herbivores. Rabbits are monogastric. Rabbits are semi or false or pseudo ruminants. We say there is a one way in and there is a one way out. Rabbits are actually very, very similar to horses. Horses also have got one way in and one way out. And that's why they have this disease they call colic. You know, because they cannot vomit. Okay, they cannot vomit. Therefore, all the above, having some knowledge of all the above, you know, will help us to arrive at the choice of the feed component. Guys, that is a secret. Because if you understand how the feed is going to perform in the animal's body, then you are able to choose the correct feed component in making your, your pellet, isn't it? Now, uh, hmm, I don't want to, I don't want this to become a biology, another biology class, guys. That's not what it is. I'm not a biologist, by the way. I love biology, by the way, but I'm not a biologist, you know. But I want us to have a practical approach. And in fact, I'm, I'm waiting on Elliot. Elliot is overloaded. He's so busy. He is actually the expert when it comes to the gastrointestinal uh, ailments that we pick up on, our, on, on some of the farms and even on our farm at the early stages. And he's become such an expert. So I'm actually waiting to see if I can get his input, you know, to make this presentation that I'm doing for you here a more practical, a more realistic, a more on hands, on the field experience. Okay, guys, I'm only giving the commentary according to what we have learned, the history, the notes that we have taken. Okay, and how we experience it. That is what I'm giving. But Elliot will be able to tell you the deeper portion of exactly how he came about these processes okay anyway yeah so uh, let's dive straight into the digestive system guys we started off by saying that rabbits are herbivores okay which means they only feed on plant materials or plant is the majority of the food that they take in guys so i don't know why people go and add fish meal blood meal bone meal to their rabbit feed totally against the rules guys they are herbivores they only feed on plant-based. You will never see a rabbit in the bush going to kill another animal to eat it. Rabbit in the bush will always eat plant-based diet. So why, when we have domesticated them, we are now adding fish, fish meal or blood meal or bone meal to their feed? Guys, the rabbit digestive system, as I said earlier on, is sophisticated. And it is able to produce some of these essential minerals or essential amino acid for itself okay all right so now if you look at the digestive system really let's just focus on the teeth you know the set of teeth in the in the mouth um it's a stone it's a single stomach uh, animal we call it monogastric the important part is that green thing there that they call the sacrum okay guy this is what makes the rabbit a pseudo ruminant this is what makes it a false ruminant because this sacrum performs exactly the same function as we have in cows or goats, you know, when you see them chewing the cud, the sacrum here allows the rabbit to have a similar characteristics. And therefore, some people tend to call the rabbit a pseudo-ruminant because it performs exactly the same function as the ruminant. So, so the, the rabbit also ferments, you know, the cellulose in the sacrum, the same way that the ruminant ferments the cellulose in their rumen, the rabbit will ferment the cellulose in its sacrum. Okay. One last critical thing that you need to know is that rabbit, they like grooming themselves. And in the process of grooming themselves, guys, hair or fur, their fur enters into their, their mouth, of course. And because the rabbit only has one direction, they cannot vomit. This fur goes through their entire digestive system. Guys, can you believe it? Honestly speaking, if you're on the farm, go back and take a piece of their dropping and look at it. Every dropping you pick up from a rabbit, there will be a fair in there. That's because the rabbit likes grooming itself quite a lot. And by so doing, they take in fair. And the only way to get the fair out is to have a lot of fiber. And guess where the fiber comes from? Guys, from the grass. So now can you see, the logic is now making sense. Everything they eat must have a lot of fiber so that it can allow for a smooth passage through the digestive system of the animal. Okay? Now, in the sacrum, there are good bacteria that perform very, very well when there's less sugar in their environment. 
At the same time, there is also bad bacteria that perform very well when there is high sugar in their system. Of course, we all want the good bacteria. And therefore, what this means is that we need to reduce the sugar content of rabbit diet. That is the only reason why I insist on not feeding high carbohydrate grains. Okay? So basically, high carbohydrate grain, uh, grains is going to increase the sugar level. If you increase the sugar level, the good bacteria are going to be overpowered by the bad bacteria. If that happens, the sacrum of the rabbit is not functioning properly. And therefore, the benefit of the fermentation that happens in the sacrum is not received by the rabbit. Now, let's go to the, the benefit or the fermentation that happens in the sacrum, guys. So, it is here in the sacrum that certain important amino acids are all produced through the fermentation. Okay, so the good bacteria, they digest or they use this cellulose environment to be able to produce essential or some amino acid for the rabbit. Okay, so that is the purpose of the sacrum, is to produce high nutritious protein from the feed that your animal has consumed. The actual good amino acid comes from the sacrum. And in the middle of the night or early morning, the rabbit is able to, you know what they call the night uh, feces or the night pool, or they call it sacotroph. I'm going to put a name here in the, in the spelling, sacotroph. This sacotroph is, I can, guys, I'm going to put a spelling out there. You can go and check it out yourself. Now, this animal go back and ingest and feed on this sacotroph. Okay, guys, it's kind of whitish, greenish uh, compound that is very high and dense in pure protein nutrients that the animal eats. And that is how your rabbit is able to get all the necessary nutrients. Okay. So, if you put in too much sugar in your rabbit food, guess what? The sacrum is not going to perform. If the sacrum does not perform, your animal is not able to... Basically, your animal is not able to produce the essential minerals, vitamins, and amino acid that the animal needs for health. And therefore, you see the animal going sick. You see the animal going, you know, gastric intestinal problem. And then before you realize, there is bloating or there is running stomach. Okay? So, with this little discussion i hope i didn't become too technical because that is not the intent rather the intent is just to communicate to you the key elements of this animal's uh, digestive system okay and guys that's how it is okay now this therefore then leads us to um, the essential amino acids so basically all other amino acids that are needed in a rabbit's diet the rabbit can actually produce that in the sacrum okay However, there is just two essential amino acids. So again, we've got non-essential amino acid and essential amino acid. The, the non-essential amino acid, the animal is able to produce that in the sacrum. That we've covered. Now, the essential amino acid, the animal is not able to produce that. And because of that, we have to give that from an external source. Now, the question is, in the world, how would they have achieved this um, essential amino acid guys the essential amino acid is still available in plants it's still available in plant sources okay and this is where the variety comes into play so a rabbit is an opportunistic feeder they go around hopping and eating bits and pieces of this leaf that leaf this grass that grass and by so doing they pick up some of these essential amino acids from different different plant sources okay but because we have kept our animal in a cage and we are not able to provide the sufficient variety in the feed it therefore means that we the farmer have to now provide this essential amino acid and these two essential amino acid guys are called lysine and methion methionine i think so okay guys these are the two essential amino acids that we need to get uh, and add to our feed formulation so whatever you do look out for these two essential amino acid that you need to get from an accredited supplier okay 
Okay, guys, uh, in summary, um, energy, you know, high fiber diet, high fiber or high cellulose helps in three different areas, guys. It helps to manage the growth in the animal's teeth, you know, by them chewing this hard, fibrous, high grass uh, feed, it helps to manage, reduces the growth in the teeth, okay? Uh, the point number two, guys, it helps uh, with good bacteria in the sacrum, which then leads to processing of good essential amino acid and minerals okay and the third part it, it helps with bowel movement so you don't have blockage or bloat as we have it which is the number one death uh, causes of death in our weenies okay so high fiber diet will obviously cause the free movement of the bowels okay and now we know that high starch feed <laughs> guys those feeding the chicken feed guys that is where we get all those funny stomach ailments and soft mucoid poo and so forth and so on is because of the corn in the chicken feed. Okay, so high starch feed will lead to poor sacral function, diarrhea, bloat, gastrointestinal diseases, you name it, all of that. So guys, uh, check out. Um, um, yeah, we did a video called The Dark Side. Guys, go out and check that. you see that all these diseases are listed out there okay so this has been uh, a rather tedious journey discussion uh, for me and i hope i did not bore you to death <laughs> and that you did pick up some good points here and there that you can apply on your own farm guys that is what i've got to say today so just look out for the third step where we then look at uh, the protein and then the premix component, okay, and toxic binders. We'll combine the protein, the premix, fat, and toxic binders to complete the component or the discussion of the table so that with all of that now done, you can then go and make an informed decision on the component that you choose to use in your pellet formation. Okay, and guys, like I said, experiment, Tweak the numbers here and there, play with it, monitor your animals, and I promise you together, we're going to grow in this rabbit business, okay? Guys, you know how we do it here at Ace Rabbit Farm. Keep farming, don't give up, and I'll catch you on the other side, okay? Bye.